I taught them about the bottomless pit and the lake of fire, and my people leave me. <laughs> and I said, well, brother, you need to quit what you're doing and go get a job digging a ditch. <laughs> At least you would uh, be able to believe and uh, stop from sending people to hell because these are the people that Jesus died for. Amen. And you better listen Amen. because Amen. this will turn you a dip- different way. The word heap, H E A P, in the Greek leads you to a funeral, and the funeral has a, n- another root word that goes with it, and that also takes you to the buyer, B I E R. It's what's going to happen to every person. And that's what Paul is telling Timothy. He says, Timothy, Look, they heap to themselves teachers have an itching ear. Mm-hmm. In other words, they're putting a curse on themselves with their itching ears, but they like it, they feel good, and they think that motiv- motivational speaking is just the way to go. And I had a lady to tell me not too long ago, she says, well, my pastor just has a lot more love than you do. And I says to her, I said, well, okay, if they have a lot more love than me, let me ask you a question. I said, who really loves you, the person that preached you the truth or pe- person that would tell you you're doing this fine the way you're doing? There's a scripture, open rebuke is better than secret love. So, you know, it feels good sometimes to have that little secret love and, oh, get your pat on your back and be babied and stuff. But, you know, open rebuke is better because it will set you free. How many I know the verse? You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The truth is what frees you. And, you know, we talked about even in Sunday school how important it is for people to grow up and stop being babies and stop wanting to owe the feel good and drinking out the baby's bottles and stuff. It's time for people to grow up and receive the truth. And as you receive the truth, it will set you free and it will take you places above this world. And I believe it will keep you, too, and it will teach you things and give you discernment. And, you know, as we're stating these things that um, are coming to pass in perilous times, it's important that you take heed into the scripture, take heed into the Bible, because I feel like the enemy, as you're saying, he's so bold, he, he comes in the churches and he tries to pervert the churches and tries to corrupt the churches. And for, you know what, people don't even preach the scriptures no more. Like you were saying about the woman, he don't even preach the scripture. So if somebody's not preaching the scripture, We urge you and charge you as Paul did. It said, from such, turn away. In other words, go the complete opposite way. Don't look back. Find a Bible preaching church. Find it, definitely. If you don't have one, you better create one. Amen. Okay, Michelle, tell us right quick. We want want also to go into the offering. Okay. Um, Right here, it says uh, he told him to be instant in season and out of season. That means you got to live the life of of getting into your word. Is that consistency? Consistent and diligence. In other words, you've got to have a prayer life every day. When right. we get into these slumps, we're not praying, and you go a day or two days without prayer, you know, that is the enemy's territory. Mm-hmm. Amen. You've walked over on yeah. his turf. You know, you're like you're sowing to the flesh, and you're going to reap to the flesh. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, you know, we have to follow the uh, Bible all the way from Exodus. When they had to go out in the morning and pray when the dew was on the mm-hmm. ground. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a New Testament concept and an Old Testament concept, and you can't get by without it. Amen. He says also, be thou watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, meaning go out and preach the gospel. And it says, make full proof of thy ministry. He said, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Okay, let me go one second here to where you was. He says, now watch in all things. Mm -hmm. The word watch, if you look at this, it's a word that means to be Mm -hmm. sober-minded. Don't touch anything from the vine. Mm -hmm. No wine is allowed. Amen. I can't get over these people who believe that, you know, uh, Samson wasn't allowed to have wine. John the Baptist wasn't allowed to have wine. But here Jesus can come along and drink wine, and he can help people to drink wine. Mm -hmm. You know, that's such a perverted idea within itself. Amen. It's ridiculous. Amen. But we have to be keeping a sober mind. Mm -hmm. Keep things out of your life that would control your mind, like television. I personally don't believe in any television. Me neither. I don't watch anything on TV. I keep my mind. The Bible said we're to love God with all of our mind. So you know what? We have to keep a holy mind, Mm -hmm. and we don't need to remember how so-and-so fornicated or Mm -hmm. lied or shot somebody or Mm -hmm. blowed up somebody or the lies that I heard on Fox last night. I don't want to be talking to myself about that. (laughs) But anyway, let's go on to verse 6 and tell us again, Because the Apostle Paul, I want to talk about the level of commitment that he made. And I want to ask people out there today, 
about their level of commitment too. Tell us about this level of commitment, uh, Michelle, about exactly what Paul had done. He says, for I am ready to be offered. And that word offered is 4689 in the Strong's um, Greek Concordance. And it says to pour out as a libation and to devote one's life or blood as a sacrifice. So he basically gave himself to the Lord as a living sacrifice every day and gave himself and his whole will to, to the Lord and then also his blood. So on the road to Damascus, whenever he was told by Jesus, it's hard to kick against the pricks. Right. And why, Paul, did I persecute me? And who he says, is it, Lord? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's so sad when you get to looking at people don't know when they're coming against the gospel. Amen. That they is no use to hate the messenger. Right. You know, I mean, you don't like the message, kill the messenger. But, you know, it's not so easy to really kill God's people. Amen. And if you were successful in killing one, you know, it would not be good for you because you'd probably go to the lake of fire. You know, I know that Paul was forgiven, but, you know, I don't think I want to believe on that. Let's talk about this libation and this offering where Paul said that um, I have actually ready to be offered and my time of my departure is at hand. What do you think about the offered uh, word here in Second Timothy chapter uh, 4, verse 6, Melanie? I believe this word offered means a literal offering of his body to be killed because it says, I am now ready to be offered. So it wasn't a, he's beginning to give his life unto the Lord and starting to do, you know, give us again, give his life unto the Lord. I believe it was, he literally knew it was his time to be um, slain. You know, the devil can't kill you before your time, but, you know, I believe as Jesus was an example, Paul probably witnessed I'm not sure exactly the times, but he knew Jesus was killed. He probably witnessed a lot of other disciples that were killed for the gospel's sake. And he probably knew that his time was now because, again, he says, for I am now ready to be offered. And, again, that word libation means an act of pouring a liquid as a sacrifice to a deity, one's life or blood. And I believe that he was slain and he knew it. Well, he may have. It's a good idea. It's a good thought. Either way, I know he lived the Lord. He lived the life for the Lord all the way from the time he was uh, stricken down on the road to Damascus. And he had always lived his life, and he offered his life up before the Lord. And now the time come for his death, and it was going to be like a uh, drink offering that they used over in the Old Testament. And it could be something physical, and it could be also the blood. It appears to me that it was probably both of them, and now right. Paul's time had come. I wonder what level of commitment you have to make to fall into this category. Got any idea? You have to be totally committed. Definitely. I mean, you can't be half in and half out. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew sixteen twenty four through 25, it says, Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will follow after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So, so it takes a dedicated person if they're really going to go all the way with Jesus. Definitely. I know that some people today are so hung up in the world. They're so hung up on crowds. How many people you go to conference well how many people you got in your church Mm -mm. well you know they want to know that i wonder what they would have said to jesus when he was in the middle of night with nicodemus (laughs) i mean he had one person and he wasn't really saved amen he was looking at it though i mean later on it was he and uh the the rich man joseph uh, of armatheus armatheus yeah he was probably him and uh nicodemus buried jesus and they quickly wrapped him and got him ready for burial. So he probably did a good thing. There was actually a book that Nicodemus had written too that they had in some of the apocryphals. Whether it was actually him or not, I don't know. Because some people signed those books with other names. You've been listening to the Word of Deliverance, and we want to give you a special invitation to be with us Friday nights. We all always pray uh, the midnight hour out and the new, year, uh, the new uh, day in, and that's at midnight here in this country. And uh, we also have always uh, good song service. We always preach the gospel, and you'll always enjoy that. We always have a great time. Every Sunday morning, Melanie has a great Sunday school class at 9.30. We have a praise and worship service beginning at 10.30, and about a little after 11, we'll take the floor and begin to preach the gospel. 
And I believe the real gospel will bring great faith to your life. And I believe that you can do great things. And I believe it will stir up the gifts that God has put in your life that's probably been dormant for so long. I believe God's got great things for the church today. And, you know, we're living in those times I believe we're preaching about in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Perilous times shall come. And we're living in those times. Men does not endure sound doctrine today, but I believe God has got a people that love the Bible. Amen. I'm Brother Enman. You have a great day, and may the Lord go with you.